If you're studying for the INBDE, I highly recommend INBDE Bootcamp, an all-in-one study resource that will help you pass your exam. Use coupon code MENTALDENTAL for 10% off. Hey everyone, Dr. Ryan here and welcome back to Mental Dental. Thanks so much for being here. This is episode four of Decoding Dental Board Questions, a series where I go through questions and show you the high yield tips and tricks that you need to know in order to pick the right answer. And today we're covering dental implants, which is an important topic sure to come up on your board exams, at least for a few questions. And if we know you're getting a few questions on this topic, we might as well nail those. So let's dive into two common practice question types regarding dental implants, and I'll share some high yield facts along the way that are easy to remember. So let's dive right into the first practice question. A patient needs an implant placed at the tooth number 19 site. What is the minimum recommended distance between the implant and the adjacent natural teeth? Is it A, one millimeter, B, 1.5 millimeters, C, two millimeters, or D, three millimeters? So a key point for this question, when placing an implant, you need to respect the biologic width and the health of the adjacent teeth. The board examiners and most textbooks recommend at least, at minimum, 1.5 millimeters between an implant and an adjacent natural tooth. This amount of spacing preserves the bone, prevents damage to the periodontal ligament of the neighboring teeth, and ensures proper soft tissue contours as well. One millimeter would be too close. You'd risk some bone loss or complications. Two or three millimeters is fine, but the minimum, which is what the question stem is specifically asking for, is 1.5 millimeters. Now for spacing between two adjacent implants, you need double that, three millimeters between those two implants. But the answer for this question is B. So the high yield tip for this question, for mesial distal spacing, always remember 1.5 millimeters between an implant and a natural tooth, three millimeters between two implants. And here's the second practice question. Each of the following can be a reason for an implant to fail during osseointegration except one. Which is the exception? A, poor primary stability. B, infection at the surgical site. C, inadequate oral hygiene. Or D, lack of occlusal contact. So let's decode this tricky except style question. And remember, whenever we're dealing with except, the goal here is we're essentially eliminating the answers that fulfill the question stem. So if there is a reason why an implant would fail during osseointegration, we eliminate that answer choice. So let's look at A first, poor primary stability. Primary stability is the immediate mechanical stability of an implant right after its placement. Poor primary stability is a common contributing factor to poor secondary stability, which is osseointegration, leading to early implant failure. So this is definitely a reason for osseointegration failure, so we rule it out. B, infection, another frequent reason implants fail during osseointegration, so we can rule that out as well. C, a lack of diligent brushing and flossing allows plaque and calculus to accumulate around the implant leading to inflammation and possible periimplantitis that can damage the tissues around the implant leading to failure of osseointegration. And so we're left with D, lack of occlusal contact, which is the exception here. Not having occlusal contact does not cause early implant failure. Excessive occlusal loading, on the other hand, like in heavy occlusion or bruxism, can certainly cause early or even late failure of an implant, but if there is no occlusion on the implant, then that's fine. That would allow the implant to heal well. So the answer to this question is D. 
So here's a few key takeaways from this video. For implant placement, we want at least 1.5 millimeters between a natural tooth and an implant, and at least three millimeters between two implants. And regarding implant failure, infection, bone quality or density, excessive mechanical forces either during placement or after placement, poor oral hygiene, and systemic conditions like uncontrolled diabetes or smoking that impede healing are all contributing factors to possible failure of osseointegration of that implant. So that's it for today's episode of Decoding Dental Board Questions. I hope that it clarified implant spacing and implant failure. If it did, please hit that like button and subscribe to this channel, Mental Dental, for more videos just like this one. I create these high yield videos based on your suggestions in the comments, just like this one. So drop a comment with the questions or topics that confuse you the most, and we'll cover those in a future episode of this series. Also, if you're not yet a member of the Mental Dental Academy, I highly recommend you check it out. I do live classes in a virtual classroom setting, just like this one where we talk about a patient case, I give you practice questions, and we work through them together as a group. So you get that practice, you get some experience being tested under time constraints, and you get the highest yield, most updated facts regarding the topics that are being tested on your board exam. So if you truly wanna feel confident walking into test day, check out the link in the description to join my Mental Dental Academy. So that's it for this video. Thank you again so much for watching. God bless all of you, and I'll see you in the next one.